Let's talk about partial molar properties. We will talk mostly about partial molar volume right now because it's the easiest one to envision and really wrap our mind around. But any extensive property of the system, like the volume, the Gibbs free energy, the enthalpy or entropy, could also be described as a partial molar property. So let's assume that we have uh, some system here. And we have 50% uh, of the atoms here are A, and 25% of the atoms are B, and 25% of the atoms are C. And this has a total volume, V prime, and this prime indicates that this is not a molar volume, but it's for the entire system. Now the question is, uh, how much of the volume of this system do we attribute to A? How much of the volume do we attribute to B? And how much of the volume do we attribute to C? So is it just 50% A, 25% B, and 25% C, or not? Uh, it could be. It's not that it's not, but it's most likely not, and uh, it's not the case if they have different sizes. So it's not true if A, B, and C are different sizes. It's also not true if they have uh, any special interactions. Right? It is true, let's just say that they're different colored tennis balls. Then that's actually true, but not if they're real atoms. Right? So what we need to do is that we need to be able to come up with an for that V prime, acknowledging that the volume is a function of the temperature, the pressure, and the number of moles of each type in the solution. So uh, V is a state function. We can write the exact differential of it, right, which we did this a lot before. It looks something like this, keeping P and all of the N constant, dt. And then the term that is most interesting to us right now is this last one. So we're going to sum from k equals 1 up to c, where c is the number of components that we have in the system, dv dn sub k. So how the volume of the system changes with more k. And now keeping the temperature, the pressure, and the number of moles of the other kind, so where j is not equal to k, constant. Okay? So as we did before when we would write these exact differentials, we could come through and we could give some meaning to these coefficients. Let's see here. I forgot my dn. It's okay. We can give some meaning to these coefficients. So dv dt, this is really how the volume changes with temperature, and this is the uh, thermal expansion, basically. Over here, dv dp, this is how the volume changes with pressure. This is called the isothermal compressibility. This last one, though, is new to us, and we are going to define that to be the partial molar volume. And we use this symbol like this. So V with the bar on top, this is the partial molar volume of component K, and it's simply defined as how the total volume of the system changes as we add more moles of K while keeping temperature, pressure, and the number of moles of other species constant as well. Right? So this is how the system volume changes when we add more K. That's what the partial molar volume of V means. Okay? And we can do this for any extensive property like I said, for any extensive property. So on that list would be 
volume, internal energy, entropy, enthalpy, Helmholtz, free energy, Gibbs, free energy. And we are going to call this, and this is what the book does, generically we're going to use the symbol B. So B could represent any of these extensive properties, right? So if we want to write an expression then for B, we know that B is a function of T, P, and all of the different number of moles, right? So we can write then that the change in B is equal to some coefficient dt plus some other coefficient dp plus the sum over all of our species, the partial molar B times dn, right? So here's our partial molar properties. And just sort of as a reminder here, generically, this is how B is defined. It's the change in the total system property as we add more of species K. All right. So let's consider now what are the what are the consequences of having partial molar properties, or what can we know about our system if we know the partial molar properties? Okay, so consequences of partial molar properties, or what can we learn about our system from these? So let's say that we want to know something about how the total volume of the system changes, right? So that's really just the sum of the changes contributed by each component. So let's sort of do a little experiment, thought experiment here. Okay, so let's say that we have uh, temperature and pressure are constant. And let's say that we have uh, N1 moles of component 1 and N2 moles and N3 moles of components 2 and 3. And we want to know sort of what is the volume of the system, right? So we can find that change in volume in this way, right? Based on the partial molar volumes of components 1 and 2 and 3, right? Um, but we have to sort of then think about, well, in what, what order did we add these in and what was the composition at that time? But we can make the assumption that we add them in in a way that keeps the composition unchanged. And that actually lets us simplify then to say that the volume, the total volume of the system is just the weighted sum of the partial molar volumes. Right? So depending on how many moles of a species we have, we multiply that by the partial molar volume of that species. We add those up and that will give us the total volume of the system. And this same expression can be written for any extensive property using our generic B. So any extensive property can be written as the weighted sum for all the species of that partial molar property times the number of moles that are there. So the last thing that I want to point out here before we end is that any partial molar property, whether that's V like we're looking at here or B, is system specific, right? So let's say that we have a um, copper gold alloy. There will be some partial molar volume of copper and some partial molar volume of gold in this particular solution, but they are specific to this binary pair, right? If I instead have a silver gold alloy, I'll have some partial molar volume of silver and partial molar volume of gold, but these two things are not equal to each other, 
because it depends on the system that we're looking at. So that's an overview of how partial molar properties are defined.